thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Hi, I'm the minister at Glen Oak Christian Church. I'm Randy Williams, and it is my joy to to welcome you to worship, to encourage you to, to uh, move into this experience of worship with us, that, that you allow yourself the time and the focus, the, the lack of distraction, that you use this moment to, to get closer to God. And I uh, also invite you just now to pause the video and go get your communion elements ready, your bread and your cup, so that later when we share, you'll be able to participate with us. Thank you for joining us. Finest bread I will provide 
till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you Let's pray together. Holy God, there's something about prayer that is so right. There's something about pausing in what we're doing and coming before you in prayer that aligns us with the center of the universe, that aligns us with the center of our own beings. There's something about stopping just now and praying together, Lord, that's extremely powerful, extremely strong and able. And we're thankful. We're thankful for this chance to do this. We pray that as we come together, you help us sense our belonging to each other. You help us to sense that, that we're together in this, that even in our isolation, even in our uh, places of uh, work where we're keeping our social distance and, and all those kinds of things, that, that we're together before you as the source of all life. We're together before you asking for you to send us a cure to the coronavirus, a, a way of stopping it in its tracks. We pray that the, those working on vaccines uh, come up with something very soon, and that those people battling the the uh, disease themselves and their own bodies uh, get the help they need for survival. We're praying for those on the front line who are the EMT workers, the, the ambulance drivers, the fire and police officers who are coming into those situations. We're praying for the folks in the emergency departments around the country and around the world. Lord, we also know that there are plenty of other things going on that need your attention. Our attitudes about getting along with each other, our issues with race and the way that, that this country has a systemic racism built into it by legislation, law after law after law that's aimed to advance the, the white and put down the black, help that whole situation to reverse itself and help us to do these things nonviolently. Help the people that are so angry to get a hold of their tempers with both hands. Lord, we pray that you use this as a righteous moment to help us move closer to what you want for us as a country, what you want for us as a world, for what you want for us as a church and as individuals. Strengthen us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Today's scripture is from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 23. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, and you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. children's moment if you can have a paper and pencil ready if not you can do the activity in your head and write it later today we are going to talk about in about a time where jesus had asked his disciples an important question it was important for them and it is still important for us today let's listen to the words in the bible to see what jesus has asked matthew 16 13 through 16 Jesus went to the area of Caesarea Philippi. He said to his followers, I am the son of man. Who do the people say I am? They answered, some people say you are John the Baptist. Others say you are Elijah. And others say that you are Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then Jesus asked them, and who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So what was the important question you heard? Yes, Jesus asks us, who do you say I am? They all had different answers. Who do you say Jesus is? What name do you call Jesus? On your paper or in your head, write who you say Jesus is. After the service, you can hang it on your refrigerator or somewhere to help you remember who Jesus is. Well, you are thinking and writing. Here's who we say Jesus is. 
Waymaker. The light of God. My savior. Jesus is my light. In the end, Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say I am? Simon Peter tells Jesus he is the Christ, the son of the living God. No matter what name we use for him, when, when we can proclaim that Jesus is the son of the living God, then we are, we are on our way to a good relationship with Christ. Let us pray. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for giving us your son. Please let us remember to proclaim every day that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. So as I'm out here preaching today, getting ready to, to share the message, I'm hearing all kinds of sounds around me. I don't know if you're picking up on that, but there, there's activity going on over at Junction City. There are things happening here. There are people traveling. And here in just a few moments, I'm sure one of my neighbors will start their lawnmowers. Uh, life is going on. Life is going on. Even in our isolation, life is going on. And there's a sense that that's an appropriate thing to talk about in that Jesus, in this... Um, message in this scripture that's before us jesus is moving like that with his disciples they're they're moving through they're they're going from one place to the next to the next they're moving through and as they move then these messages these things happen these miracles uh, occur the a healing will happen a feeding will happen those different things occur uh, and life's going on and, and it seems that that's appropriate for us as we think about how it is that life happens in the midst of activities and involvements and what's going on. And, and that's where we're called to be faithful. Now you think about that. Where are you called to be faithful? Now, uh, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Do you like questions like that? Do you like questions that kind of challenge you to kind of, well, let's see. A uh, chicken? Well, uh, an egg is not so, well, you know. I have a, a friend, Wally, who enjoyed very much messing with people with those kinds of little uh, puzzlers, those little quizzes, those little riddles that he would ask. And the one that was his favorite to ask in a new group of people, uh, you know, I was with him several times when this happened, he would ask, he said, now, I was born the same day as my brother. We have the same biological parents. I was born the same day of the same year, the same hour as my brother. We have the same grandparents. We even have the same bedroom. But he is not my twin. What is he? And the kids would go, ooh. The same day? Yes, the same day. The same hour? Yes, yes. And they'd pursue and pursue and pursue. And they would just get so frustrated. And he loved their befuddled, but he loved their just kind of, uh-huh, uh-huh, you're not getting it, are you? And he just, the kids would get all animated. and But the adults, too, would kind of like, how's that possible? You were born to the same biological parents on the same day, the same, have the same grandparents, but you're not twins and as the the frustration would build to a zenith he would ask he says now do you want me to tell you no 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 let me figure this out he says do you want me to tell and finally they'd give up and say, with a growl yeah go ahead tell me and he'd say he was not my twin because he was my triplet oh uh, now, Jesus is having an insider discussion with his disciples. He's not trying to trick them. He's not trying to, to steer them the wrong way or the right way. He's, he's just trying to talk to them about the situations. I guess he is trying to steer them the right way. But you hear what I'm saying. As, as that's going on, um, he asked people, he, he asked them, who are people saying that I am? What's the word on the street? As people talk about Jesus, 
who are they saying I am? Oh, and it's at that point that they go through a list. Well, the, one of the prophets, they name some names, and, and then he says, but who do you say that I am? And Peter you can almost seem like they're in the, the front of the classroom raising his head. He says, oh, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And it's, it's such a wonderful answer. Jesus stops everything. Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, son of Jonah. S Simon, he says, you know, on, on that answer, that answer is so wonderful, it could have only come from God. You think about it. You think about it. Instead of the, the student bringing the teacher a polished apple and saying, here, here's my apple here. Instead of the, the teacher getting a, an apple from the student, it's as though this teacher, Jesus, has given the student a bushel of apples, a basket of apples. Here, have it. You know, it's as though the, the, you know, the golden buzzer has been hit and all the, the stuff falls from the ceiling and yeah, this is great. You're straight to the finals, Peter. But what happens? Jesus changes Peter's name. His name had been Simon up to that. He says, but you're a rock. And on this rock, I will build my church. And there's a wordplay that goes on in the Greek. Because when he says Peter, Petros, then Petra is a rock mass. It's not... It's not a little pebble, it's not a little stone, it's not uh, a piece of gravel, it's a rock mass. It's like on this piece of granite, I'm going to build my church. And what's the granite? Is it the person of Peter? Is it the statement of faith that he's made? Well, there's this debate going on. I think it's both. I think there's something about the dynamism of Peter that he's leader and the group understands that. There's also the dynamism of the, of the statement, the statement. When we say Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, there's some power released in that. There's some, some vitality that, oh, the, the things are different than they were before you said that. When you say that, there's something powerful. But now, as Jesus then and finishes that little section in the 16th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, there's the 20th verse and then the 21st verse. And in the 21st verse and following, Jesus starts to explain that he's going to suffer and die, that when they get to Jerusalem, things are going to be different and, and he's going to be killed. And that is so off-putting to Peter he says, oh, no, you're not. No, that's not going to happen. I've got a plan. i got a plan. But he, he, Peter doesn't quite say it that way, but the implication is that Peter expects Jesus to be a Messiah, to be the Christ, to be the, the leader of the faith community, to be the one God has sent for us, but that's going to take on a new dynamic, a new form of leadership, that, that Jesus is going to be the kind of leader that Peter expected him to be. Peter said, you are the Christ. And then Peter fills it with his own meaning. Jesus says, your answer could have only come from God. But by the, this next section, he says, get behind me, Satan. How could somebody fall away it happens to all of us it happens to all of us in this quick passage we don't know how long it takes maybe it's several days that this going on in the gospel and it's not clear how much time there is there in Jesus working with Peter he gets the answer he wants you are the Christ the son of the living God and then he gets this resistance to what that means that he's going to suffer and die and that somehow that death that death is going to make a difference for the world that is so upsetting to peter he he wants to change it and you know that happens to me i say jesus is the christ the son of the living god and then i i don't want to 
follow what that means. I don't want to do what I get told to do. I get a, I get a message. I get an instruction. I, I, uh, a vague push. You know, you need to go see this person. You need to go do this. You need to forgive this person who's hurt you. You need to apologize where you've hurt this other. You need to, to work at your job with the best of your ability, regardless of, of what your boss is like. You know, you need to do this. You need to, you need to respect your, your parent, regardless. It's that kind. When we get into those situations in life, where our feelings get hurt, and we're not sure, we want to define what it means to be Christian with our own definition. And Jesus here is so tempted to go with what Peter wants that he says, no, 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 don't tempt me like that. Don't tempt me like that. Get thee behind me, Satan. That's what he's saying. He's saying, Peter, if you only knew how tempted I was to do that, and because I'm tempted to do the wrong thing and not follow God like God wants me to, I'm going to have to react very strongly. And that's what happens right here. Think about it. As we live our lives for Jesus, as we live our lives, we're called to be faithful. Sometimes that challenge is very hard. And sometimes our answers are so great they can only come from God. Amen. Um, we've come to that part in the service where it's time to talk about offering. And I have a devotion to share with you, again, from our daily bread that I've been waiting to share with you. It's called The Man in Seat 2D. Kelsey navigated the narrow airplane aisle with her 11-month-old daughter, Lucy, and Lucy's oxygen machine. They were traveling to seek treatment for her baby's chronic lung disease. Shortly after settling into their shared seat, a flight attendant approached Kelsey, saying a passenger in first class wanted to switch seats with her. With tears of gratitude streaming down her face, Kelsey made her way back up the aisle to the more spacious seat while a benevolent stranger made his way towards hers. Kelsey's benefactor embodied the kind of generosity Paul encourages in his letter to Timothy. Paul told Timothy to instruct those in his care with the command to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and be generous and willing to share. It's tempting, Paul says, to put our hope in the riches of this world, but instead, he suggests that we focus on living a life of generosity and service to others, becoming rich in good deeds, like the man from seat 2D on Kelsey's flight. So, who's been generous and willing to share with you? With whom can you share generously today. You can send your offering to the church in your offering envelope, or you don't even need an offering envelope. You can just put it in an envelope and mail it to the church, or you can go to the church website, glenoakchurch.org, click on the giving tab at the top, and give by PayPal or credit card. Or, if you're not in a place to be able to give financially just now, what can you do to still be a generous giver? Check on a neighbor? Offer to get someone groceries? Send a text? Send a note to somebody? There's nothing funner, is that a word? There's nothing more fun than getting a note in the mail. Giving is an act. Generosity is a condition of the heart. 
Only a generous heart is refreshed by giving. It is this generous heart our Father waits eagerly to bless. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, you are the generous one. You watch and you wait, graciously showering your blessings on those who share from their hearts. Refresh our spirits to see the beauty in pouring into others. Give us hearts that long to give. Give us hearts like yours. Amen. Schools all over this country are trying to decide, do we open, do we not open, uh, how do we deal with that? And I'm just reminded about how it felt as a freshman to go away to college. And there was a sense that the driving factor in that was the desire to belong. I went to a small uh, Christian church school in, in Oklahoma, and I didn't know anybody on campus when I showed up. I, I was moving in and getting going. and and all, but I wanted to belong. There's this sense to this driving force of wanting to belong. Uh, fraternities, sororities, uh, clubs, social groups, uh, participating in the campus life and, and getting to, to feel like you belong, that's important. Well, there's, there's something about the church that we share in communion every week. We remember Jesus, we remember what Jesus has done for us and how it is that we all belong. We belong to the one who loved us enough to experience uh, the life and, and death and, and then to return and to offer us life eternal. It was when he was with his disciples in the upper room that he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body given for you, take and eat in remembrance of me. And in the same way also, at the close of the supper, he took the cup and he gave thanksgiving and he declared, this is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord Jesus until he comes again. Today's communion prayer is a communion hymn. Pray with me, will you please? Draw us near to thee, dear Lord. Speak to us thy holy word. May we lay aside each care as in fellowship we share. Break the bread again, dear Lord. Pour the cup as thou hast poured. Let us hear the words unsaid. Bless each cup, each piece of bread. Grant forgiveness for our sin. Help us see thy love therein. Love has paid redemption's price. Faith accepts thy sacrifice. Draw us near to thee, dear Lord. Speak again thy holy word. May our sleeping joys awake, as in faith we now partake. Amen.
May you have a wonderful week this next week. May you have a sense of God's presence with you. Whatever thing that you're dealing with, whatever issue that you're battling, may, may you have a sense of, of God's direction on what you need to be doing and God's hope and empowerment that uh, hey, things work together for good for those that love the Lord. And may you know whatever happens this week that Jesus loved you emphatically. Live in that love now and always. Amen.